Joining me now for her first national interview since today's hearing is Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney of Wyoming, who's one of two Republicans serving on the January 6th Select, Com Select Committee. Congresswoman, uh, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. What did you think was the most important part of today's testimony? Well, thank you, Jake. It's good to be with you. Um, I thought the most important part was um, the opportunity for the American people to hear directly from these these heroes, uh, these these men who fought for us, uh, for them to hear firsthand accounts, some that they hadn't heard before, to see footage that we hadn't seen before in some cases, uh, of exactly what they faced that day. The fact that these officers, um, particularly those on the West Front, uh, were fighting to the death. Uh, and they had said that they uh, frankly understood that they might uh, die and and to hear you know the the rioters and those in the mob in one instance say to these police officers you're going to die tonight I think those kinds of facts are so important as we are discussing why this can never happen again and what we need to do to ensure the people who did it are held accountable you said today quote we must also know what happened every minute of that day in the White House every phone call every conversation every meeting unquote why is that? What do you think we could learn? Well, we need to understand uh, the planning. We need to understand the financing. We need to understand, um, you know, how it was that we ended up with a group of, of uh, people who clearly were uh, invading the Capitol, who were attempting to have us uh, stop counting electoral votes, um, who were conducting this exceedingly violent assault on the Capitol. Um, we need to understand what their connections were. We need to understand uh, what the organizational structure was. Uh, and we know some things already, obviously. We know that, that while the attack was unfolding, um, the uh, President Trump did not send help. Um, and so I think if you look at the things that we know, if you look at the things that were in the uh, impeachment brief, there's a lot out there already, uh, but there's a lot to be filled in. And the details really matter here. You said this afternoon that the subpoenas for the committee should be issued quickly. Who do you think should be subpoenaed? Well, that, that is uh, something that, that is going to be determined based upon where the facts lead us. Uh, Chairman Thompson, uh, as you just reported, has uh, said that, that he believes that subpoenas should be issued quickly. Uh, we need to move quickly to enforce subpoenas if, if people choose to contest them. Um, but it, it's, it's really important that we have transparency. It's really important that the American people know exactly what happened. Um, and, and that we make sure that it can never happen again. You know, we, we owe that to the democracy. We owe that to our constitutional republic, um, and, and we owe it to our kids. Should the committee be willing to go to court to enforce subpoenas if necessary, even against members of Congress, if they refuse to testify? A absolutely. I mean, I think the committee is going to make those decisions about uh, who uh, will be subpoenaed and, and what documents we need. Um, those are decisions that, that will be determined based upon the facts. Um, and we have to be willing to, to go to court to enforce those uh, if, if people contest them. One of the things I find so troubling about all of this is you and, and Adam Kinzinger and, and others are saying that they tried to steal the election. These MAGA forces tried to steal the election once and they're going to try again. And we don't hear Kevin McCarthy and Steve Scalise and Lee Stefanik say, no, 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 we would never do that again. There is zero attempt at reassuring people that that what you are suggesting is not true. Look, uh, you know, in, in some ways, I think it's actually even worse than that, Jake. I think that we're in a situation where um, the people that you mentioned uh, seem to view this as some sort of a partisan political game. And, um, you know, as, as every American who watched saw uh, this morning, uh, this is really deadly serious. This is a situation where um, the institutions held um, but it was a close run thing. And as, as the chairman said, we didn't have a peaceful transfer of power. Um, you know, we had a, an insurrection, we had an assault on the Capitol. Uh, and, and today you had members of, of uh, Congress, Republican members of Congress, actually protesting in front of the Justice Department on behalf of the people who were here and who've been arrested because they participated in the riot and in the insurrection. I mean, that is, uh, that's a stunning and, and uh, indefensible turn of events. That was going on on one uh, end of Washington. On the other end, uh, on Capitol Hill, the strategy from House Republican leaders McCarthy, Scalise, Stefanik was to, to counter the committee hearing with their press conference where their basic message was Speaker Pelosi is to blame. Take a listen to this from Congresswoman Stefanik. 
The American people deserve to know the truth that Nancy Pelosi bears responsibility as Speaker of the House for the tragedy that occurred on January 6th. I mean, that's obviously nonsense. Uh, Speaker Pelosi is not in charge of security uh, in the House any more than then Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was. What's your reaction when you hear them try to blame Pelosi for an insurrection incited and inspired and even directed in some ways by Donald Trump? Well, I would say a couple of things, Jake. Number one, um, this committee is going to investigate every aspect of what happened. Um, the planning, the financing, the preparation, the motivation, uh, what was happening uh, that day in the White House, what was happening here at the Capitol, the security breaches at the Capitol. So for anybody to suggest that we aren't going to be conducting a complete investigation is wrong. Number two, if I were saying the things that you just played, I I'd be deeply ashamed of myself. Uh, what happened is absolutely clear. Uh, we had, um, as we heard this morning, uh, just intolerable cruelty. Um, a mob that was assembled by President Trump uh, was provoked by him. Uh, he lit the flame for what happened. We've seen that not just in the speech on the ellipse, but throughout. What this committee needs to understand is exactly what the details were of the planning and the financing. But for um, anybody to be suggesting that somehow he wasn't responsible, um, I, I just I think it's shameful. You didn't know Speaker Pelosi particularly well before this. You are a very conservative Republican. She's a very progressive Democrat. You're both fairly partisan. What's it been like working with Pelosi? You know, I've been um, really impressed um, with the professionalism and the commitment to the truth um, from uh, the Speaker and every member of this committee. Uh, I think that, you know, as I said this morning, this is a moment that has to be above politics. It's a moment where we all need to say to ourselves, are we going to abide by our oath and are we going to put politics and partisanship aside and get to the truth? Uh, or are we going to go down a path that fundamentally threatens the rule of law? And, and that's just that's not something I'm willing to do. Uh, and I think it's, it's crucial for the country that, that we all uh, conduct ourselves that way. At the end of today's hearing, one of the four officers, Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn, uh, said this about you and your fellow Republican on the committee, Congressman, Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Take a listen. Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger are being lauded as courageous heroes. And while I agree with that notion, why? Because they told the truth? Why is telling the truth hard? I guess in this America, it is. What, what were you thinking when he said that? I, I was thinking that, that Harry and the other officers there, they are the heroes. Um, they're the ones who saved likely our lives, many of us. Uh, they're the ones who protected and defended this Capitol. They, they are heroes. Um, and, and that as elected officials, as I was sitting there, I was reminded that our job is to conduct ourselves in a way that is worthy of the sacrifices they made and their willingness um, to fight, as I said, to the, to the death. They, they believed they might die, and they were willing. Officer Gunnell, uh, Sergeant Gunnell said, you know, I knew I might die, but I understood that that might be something that, that I just have to face in order to defend the Capitol building. And so as, as elected officials, we all have to conduct ourselves in a way that is worthy of them and worthy of the republic that, that we, uh, we've sworn, the Constitution that we've sworn to defend. You've said that some of your Republican colleagues are actually saying one thing publicly and quite different things to you behind the scenes. What are they saying behind the scenes? You know, I think we've seen um, since, uh, since January 6th, certainly, um, uh, concern among, you know, a number of Republicans that public actions uh, could either, you know, bring political consequences or could bring, you know, real security threats. And so we've seen people who um, in private will say that they recognize and understand um, the necessity of the truth and the necessity of getting to the truth um, and are, you know, trying in public not to uh, draw the wrath of the former president, frankly. Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy said yesterday that the committee is a sham, the outcome's predetermined, that you and Adam Kinzinger are quote unquote Pelosi Republicans, although we should note he votes with Pelosi a lot more than you do. Um, how do you convince the Republican base that this is a legitimate investigation? 
Well, I think today was a real start. Um, I think that today and the broadcasting of the, the testimony of these witnesses and, and beginning to help to get the facts out is really important, and that, that's the beginning of this process. Um, I think that, that uh, Leader McCarthy uh, and every leader has an obligation to the truth. Um, some, some of us feel like you know, we ought to conduct ourselves accordingly. Uh, I think Leader McCarthy is continuing to demonstrate that you know, he, uh, he, he views this as some sort of a political game. It's not a game, um, and it's, it's, uh, it's deadly serious when you're taking action to try to divert attention away and distract from uh, an investigation like this one.